Heises Atomic Car Review Team. <laughs> Hi, this is Atomic Car Review Team. An hour today review about 2014 Acura MDX. This is one of the most selling SUVs in the United States. We're in the front of 2014 Acura MDX with technology package and uh, it's not a most expensive package. You can add also like entertainment package which is include rear DVD with HDMI which is great options and also you can buy advanced options. In this car you can in this case with advanced options you can get something like line assistance and uh, active cruise control. Also, you can add some options with the tire. Base version with front wheel drive or even with all wheel drive usually you, you came on 18 inch rims, but for advanced package or even if you want to pay for this by yourself, you can add 20 inch rims. This particular motor came on the market in 2014 with new engine, which is, was a little bit less powerful than previous one on 10 uh, horsepower. Right now it's 290 horsepower. On the previous generation was 300. About design of this car. I'm not a fan. I would say previous generation I like much, much more because it looked much more scared and brutal. First of all, they removed the double exhaust on the back and second reason they put pretty thin tire for this car. Again, they try to reduce rolling resistance and save your money on the gas and get less weight. For first couple of years, Acura built MDX with, I would say, old design his own transmission is six-speed automatic transmission but i would say it's a good transmission yes for first generation it was a horrible transmission but then they fix it and they make this transmission one of the best on the market after this they decide to replace it for more fancy one i think it's nine speed automatic transmission from zf and as usually again zf has the smoothest uh, i think shifting on the market i have zf transmission for example my jaguar and smooth really, really uh, shift smooth and really really well but as soon as they replace this transmission for ZF customers start complaining Acura please don't do this because you build reputation of reliable car for so many years and almost destroy your reputation with first generation MDX and finally fix it with the second one and don't get a mess with the third one please Acura MDX equipped with a KLS entry and what I really like it about this car that's because for example a little bit cheaper car as my Dodge Durango you have options to press the button to lock the car only on the front door or on the trunk. Over here you can, you have even on the back door, which is nice, you don't have to run around. And one of my favorite options in this car in general, I think I, this one option I really love it about this car. It's in dark time when you get uh, close to your car, uh, it's turning on light outside of the car and you see some knowledge. Wet spot or dark spot next to your car and maybe some dog spot or cat spot and you're not gonna step in this and you can jump in the car without any problem. One pretty nice thing which I would say it's awesome thing about this car. Uh, just check it out how look uh, this wheel. They pr they pretty clean. Again, it's a I think it's a first time wash since they bought this car since it's 2014. And guys, what I can tell you, brake pads on this car is really really great. I would say it's absolutely no dust uh, after two years these rims look like on my Chrysler 300 with sports style uh, brake pads after two days this is the first year of production uh, I mean current generation of uh, Acura MDX and uh, first what you can find out uh, compared to previous generations it's much more plastic under the knees it's not so much as for example under the Germans uh, SUVs but again it's like much much bigger mount compared to American SUVs. A particular car has 43,000 miles, which is uh, ar around 70,000 kilometers. And uh, again, like it's Acura, it's pretty reliable car, I would say without any problem. We see right now, because they try to find, I mean, like get better aerodynamic, which is according to Acura uh, database, in 16% more compared to previous generation. What they did it, first of all, they cover some like stuff with the plastic, which is again, uh, increase your anti rust protection as usual and uh, increase your aerodynamic. And as Acura said, the 
thanks to like better aerodynamic on a Nürburgring in German, current generation of Acura NDX, which has started to be on the market after 2014, get faster on eight seconds on each lap on Nürburgring, which is like huge number compared to previous generation. I would say why I like I'm personally allow uh, Acura MDX previous generation and this generation because I think it's one of the best sport SUV and family SUV in the same package. Stabilizer bar. Front one is pretty regular, but on the back it's really, really wide. Compare, for example, for, with Buick Enclave, it's even wider, but Buick is much more heavier uh, SUV. Look at the stabilizer bar on the back. Toyota Highlander not even close to this size, right? It's, I would say it's even the same size as on uh, uh, Chrysler 300, which I put on my own Chrysler 300 after some customizing. I put 22 millimeter. Let's, let, let's measure how much is this one. Sorry, I don't see anything. It's 27 millimeter. Wow. Oh my God, it's really, really wide. For example, right now we're under much more heavier car, which is Buick and Clay 2017. And let's check the size over here. It's 22 millimeters. But smaller car, Acura MDX, but with much more wider stabilizer bar, which is explain why this car has so good handling. Particular Acura MDX with a technology package, which is include even uh, like adjustable sport suspension with three modes. You can choose like regular, comfort, uh, comfort, normal and sports. And sports mode on this car, I would say incredible. It really make your steering wheel much more tight and the suspension much more tight. I think it's like genius uh, like settings for uh, suspension and for transmission also. Like which you, again, you can do without any mechanical improvement just with the settings. Brakes. On Acura MDX, I would say they the same good as on any other Hondas or Acuras because Honda and Acura always like, like be famous by his uh, sports uh, handling. And the uh, brakes also pretty good, but I would say it could be better again, like better with usually be German SUVs has better handling. But again, let's talk a little bit about brake rotors. This car has 43,000 miles, which is again around 70,000 kilometers. And I would say next time when you have to replace the brake pads, you're supposed to replace the brake rotors. Uh, but again, it's 43,000 miles, but car still has original brake pads on the front and on the back. I would like to show you difference between uh, Japanese uh, SUV and the uh, American SUV. I would say Honda is one of the best car from a whole Japanese market uh, with his uh, like anti-rust protection. But again, like it's not even close compared to German's car. And right now I'll show you what I mean. For example, they still didn't put any seals on the uh, body panel connections. They put just in some area when you usually see the sand and dust uh, from the road, which is usually you can put <laughs> with your tires. Uh, and uh, you see, this is like pretty good uh, sample where they put usually seals or some rubber to protect his body. But on some area, like over here, you see already some show up some rust. I would say you would never see anything like this on Mercedes and BMW. On BMW, it's a little bit worse than on Mercedes or for example, than on Audi. But again, compared to Nissan, Hyundai, it's much, much better. And right now, and right now, I will show you how all this stuff look on 2017 Buick and Clay. This one is great car. 2017 Buick and Clay with, with 34,000 miles. You see, on the Acura, at least you can see some spot with a seal, with a rubber, with anti-rust protection material. On Buick, it's like you cannot find even one spot. And again, check it out how look Buick and Clay. Uh, brake lines they still do the same bad quality as they usually do and this was this really horrible quality for example i took this brake line from 2006 cadillac dts and i think a lot of people know that chrysler for example has a bad anti-rust protection but compared to gm nothing is so bad look at this it's just i don't know like one big piece of rust and on honda 
on Honda or Acura MDX, they have rubber coating and uh, I would say right now, only right now, I do some brake line job on Hondas which is built in 1997, 1995, but not in 2006 like for Cadillac or Buick or GM, like any other GM car. Particular Acura MDX still uh, has like old Acura's uh, transmission which is six-speed automatic transmission. After 2015 they start to put the EF transmission and I don't know if it's good or not because as soon as they put the EF transmission which again like usually pretty smooth to shift uh, again it's like German transmission like high technology but the EF usually never built like pretty I mean uh, not pretty very reliable uh, transmission some of them really really good but most of them very technology technological but not reliable as soon as Acura changed transmission for the EF brand the uh, customers start to get complaint about hard shifting. It's the same transmission as on uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, I think on Jeep Renegade and many other cars. And again, many other brand car, I mean, even Chrysler did some recall on this transmission. And they said that problem was with software update. They updated software and as Acura said, right now everything fine. But again, if you do some research online, you still find a lot of complaints even after uh, software update. About noise level on uh, 2014 Acura MDX, or I would say on, in general on third generation of Acura MDX. For example, this is a technology package which is like mid-grade. Also you have like, you can choose base version or advanced. And for example, for advanced version as uh, Acura tell, you can get even better noise insulation. First of all, uh, thanks to better quality of uh, fender liner. I think, I never check how they look on the uh, advanced package, but I believe they put the same, the same fender liner as on the back on this car, which is uh, they usually do from soft material. And for, to be honest, it's really surprised me why Acura didn't put this even in base version on the front. For example, on my 2011 Dodge Durango, not 2014, they put this, on the front and on the back. But again, this car, even without all this uh, fender liner, still much more quiet than my Dodge Durang. If you ever watch any review on YouTube about uh, Acura MDX for this generation, for third generation, a lot of talk about uh, double screens on dashboard, about idea, how good they are, how, how many buttons they save right now because they I mean, replace regular buttons on, just on a touch screen. I would say, yeah, it's a good idea to save buttons, but I think it's the main idea to just be accordingly to the time right now and uh, like to the future. And the idea is because they save a lot of money for manufacture. And it looked really good, but the biggest problem with the, this uh, double screen, if you somewhere in a dark area as we are right now, you can see something. But for example, if you move somewhere on the sun and if sun will be from one of the side you're not gonna see anything and one thing which i really hated about this car is really looks stupid and idea how it works it's stupid it's how you turn seat, heat and seats on press the button and then each time to increase the level of heat you're supposed to press it it's like if you really want to warm up your like most important part or part of your body you're supposed to press it four times i think like it's supposed to work just when you touch it it's supposed to go on a maximum level and only after this if you really want to reduce a little bit heat you're supposed to press something but i think as soon as you press it it's supposed to be on a maximum level how it's usually work in normal car and the same problem as on the previous generation maybe just a little bit better it's a backup camera it's horrible it's i don't know why what they put maybe they put some like cheap lens in the uh, backup camera it's like always look foggy and i don't know like milky and i would say even general complaint about upper screen it's look like i don't they mix it view of this uh, screen with the milk and right now we will move a little bit on the sun and just check it out on the sun is even worse And during uh, rainy weather or cold weather, it's like, you're not gonna see anything. It's not so bad as on previous generation, but it's still bad. In general, from whole Japanese car market, I think Acura or Honda has the best seats, but I don't know why, for, again, for luxury SUVs, they didn't put 
adjustment for your back support and this may be the reason why I not really like it the seat because each time when you want to add some support for your back you add it more for your butt but I want to put them a little bit higher with my rise which is uh, like 6.1 and uh, if you without anything for example without heavy jacket winter jacket it's okay but during the winter time it's really need to be upper but you cannot do this for luxury SUV I think it's not a normal and another thing about seats I think they made the seats uh, better compared to previous generation especially I like uh, side support I think it's a little bit better but I think they reduce a little bit support on the upper parts this is why I would say like if I would think which one, which seats is better in previous generation or current generation I would say they pretty even and my biggest complaint about this seat when you just jump in it it feels really really comfortable the same as on the previous generation but after some long drive I start to feel that the cushion of uh, the seat is too soft and I would say you feel the same as you sit on a, a memory foam mattress if you just jump it it's nice and comfortable but then you so, uh, feel that you go deeper deeper and uh, you feel like your bottom part eat your underpants for this money it's uh, very surprising to see that there is no heated seats on the back in the cheaper Dodge Durango 2011 we have heated seats on the second and the first row another thing which I don't like it about this car is that how your foot fit in uh, your footrest for example you cannot put like this you feel always at this spot something like heels and you really want to all the time move your foot or, like a little bit far and then it start to I would say shaking or not, not comfortable or you're supposed to do like this but again it's not comfortable but if you want to put normal way your foot is like I mean doesn't fit well it's uh, during the long trip it's really bother and again guys it's not a cheap car it's a luxury SUV but even in limited edition of uh, uh, Jeep Cherokee you have heated the steering wheel on technology package as this one you don't have it again like you're supposed to add money for luxury car why they didn't do this in the base okay guys look at this mirror you see it's a little bit curved so uh, probably it's supposed to help you when you drive it but it freaks me out honestly when the car is trying to pass you it feels like it's going to crash on you so I don't know why but this freaks me out and Igor also says that it's not a good feature. Akira, congratulations! Finally on third generation of your luxury SUV you made it uh, all automatic windows. Yay! Another congratulations Akira. Finally on the third generation of your vehicle you can put your kids from any part uh, side of the car. Even from left side. Yay! It's so feel luxury right now I can do this from any side, even from left and right. Good job. Trunk space. I would say it's big again, like what you're supposed to see over here. You see? But you cannot put something like this. Why? Because of the angle of rear window. <laughs> you look sporty, but you cannot put anything. But in general, in uh, this generation, in third generation of Acura MDX trunk, start to be bigger why because this car is longer they increase the space on the back seat and they increase the trunk space and also you have pretty nice features again like in, even in previous generation but at current generation is a little bit bigger it's additional trunk space under uh, regular trunk but what I can tell it's really again like make you feel that you own a luxury SUV for example in regular car you suppose just it's like just regular shield over here it's like with soft pressness I feel myself really really rich you can fold all your two back rows for, I mean third rows and uh, second row but again why for example I choose Dodge Durango or before my previous SUV Ford Freestyle because you also can fold it uh, front passenger seat in this case you can put something really really long I would say Acura MDX it's not a IKEA shopper's car one of the my favorite space in any Acura, I would say in any MDX, it's a back seat. I think with the back seat you really feel yourself like a king. Yeah. I would say it's much softer than in German's comparative. My, it's just just my opinion. Uh, back seat in Audi Q7 is 
I would say, okay, junk compared to Acura. Because, why? Because I don't like it how they feel on the driver's seat because it's a little bit soft. But on the back, softness as it's supposed to be because you're a main person over here on the back seat and it's supposed to be soft and comfortable. And also, I think it's much more legroom. And again, this car is more front wheel drive. If you can check, it's all flat floor over here. On most of the, for example, uh, SUVs with which is usually just real wheel drive, it's uh, or like all wheel drive, but with main drive on the back, it's a tunnel for your drive shaft. Or here, it's totally flat floor. This give you like much more space on the back. One of the things which is looks for me really weird on uh, Acura MDX, why on previous generation Honda Pilot, even in base version with a closed interior, they have shades on the back seat, which is again, it's a family car, any three rows SUV like means that it could be family car. I, again, Acura is a little bit sporty, but in Acura and DX, you're supposed to pay additional so to have a shades on the back seat. Why they put it in base version of Pilot, previous generation, but didn't have in the base version, which is even not base, it's technology package in Acura and DX. Weird. But why people usually buy Acura, not some any, any German SUV, for example? Even my choice, I own it, uh, 2008 Acura MDX, that's reliability. And uh, that's how much maintenance of this car costs. And right now, let's talk about the best achievements of this car. It's uh, maintenance cost and the reliability. This particular car, 2014 Acura MDX, has 43,000 miles in it. And uh, if you ask me, what did we do on this car? What kind of service? I would say nothing, just oil change. Really, really nothing. Even if you check brake pads and rotors, they still, I would say, around 50% left uh, from original one. And again, maybe right now you're supposed to replace the brake rotors together with brake pads because I think the Acura changed a little bit. Maybe materials or maybe style of the brake calipers and right now they're more aggressive and it's the same as in German car usually you need to replace each time rotors together with the brake pads right now the same story will be with Acura about closest service which you can get uh, before 100,000 miles on Acura I would say it's brake dropper and filter uh, replacement but filter you filters you're supposed to replace each 30,000 miles which is again not a big deal you can find it online some like pretty pretty cheap uh, filters for I don't know eight, seven, ten dollars for air filter or even cabin filter. It's not gonna be like huge money. Again, if you're gonna order this from dealer, total replacement of uh, original one filter and uh, for engine and original filter for cabin would cost you around $115 uh, if you're gonna do this in regular repair shop. If you will go to a dealer where, where is a, our rate is higher, of course it's gonna be higher. But in general, I would say you definitely can replace both of the filter for $70, $80 in regular repair shop. Or you can replace it by yourself, which is, I would say, pretty, pretty easy on this car. It's not a German car. Maybe, I don't know, for $20 total. Right now about brakes. Uh, again, it's a pretty soon service could be, like not soon, but again, like 40,000 miles and still original, but about price. For example, if you're gonna do this in with dealer parts in a regular shop, not in dealership, it's gonna cost you $1057. Why? They asked, I would say, too much money for brake rotors. Front brake rotors could cost you $175, and the rear brake rotors could cost you each, each of them $165, which is even more expensive compared to his, like, comparatives as BMW X5. BMW X5, for example, the price for brake rotors, uh, it's, uh, 160 for front and 155 for back. But total for, for example, for brake job for front and rear, uh, included the brake pads and rotors, for BMW will be higher. Why? Because they ask, I don't know why, like crazy money for brake pads. Brake pads for BMW X5, original one, uh, could cost it $216 for front and $127 for back. Compared to Acura, it's $80 for front and $70 for back. And again, guys, about Acura brake pads, I would really like to tell you, it's the last dusty brake pads which I ever saw. The owner of this car never washed his uh, car and they look the same as on my Dodge Durango or my uh, Chrysler 300 after two days. I mean, the same level of dust for four years and for two days. Total uh, for BMW brake pads, because they have a little bit cheaper rotors, would cost you like for four wheels with four rotors, $1,200 which is like not a big difference, just $200, but again, it's like 
it's money in your budget. You can buy something additional for this money. Service of this car is pretty easy. You, I would say you don't need the service. All what you're supposed to do, usually on the Acura, is just rep replace oil and replace filters until 100,000 miles. So the biggest service is spark plug replacement and timing belt replacement is around 100,000 miles. But again, you could think, oh, oh, this car is bad. They have timing belt. Everybody right now have a timing chain. But I will give you some sample. Biggest competitor to Acura MDX or Honda Pilot in general, Honda, it's Toyota. And for example, what did Toyota? They replaced timing belt and put timing ch chain. And for example, when I just heard about this, I said, oh, great. Right now, Toyota even more reliable, even more cheaper to maintain. But it was a, not really true. I would say any mechanic could confirm that Toyota has very, very bad uh, water pump on 3.5 liter engine. The same engine on the Lexus RX 350 or like Toyota Camry or many other cars. And what, what you, I mean, what's happened with the, this uh, uh, water pump? Usually you're supposed to replace it even before 100,000 miles. So it's even earlier than timing belt on Acura MDX. And labor time for replacement of this uh, timing, uh, I mean, water pump, it's 6.3 hours crazy number and 6.3 hours together with a part of the uh, water pumps it's 1071 dollars and sometimes you're supposed to do this even twice before 100,000 miles I saw also a car who never did this but in general Toyota's 3.5 liter engine is need to replace water pump at least one time before 100,000 miles and yes you're supposed to replace a timing belt on Acura which is like pretty big job but guys you will replace timing belt you will put whole seals for crankshaft camshaft you will put water pump and this will cost you a little bit less than 800 dollars on honda or on the toyota highlander on lexus rx 350 it will be over 1000 dollars which is more money for more reliable car 3.5 liter engine from Acura or Honda. I think it's one of the best engines on the market by time to replacement spark plugs. I would say it's taking maybe just 40 minutes and total for replacement whole spark plugs on this car will cost you maybe $150. On BMW, it will be around uh, X5. It will be around 250 And Toyota, because they have like more complicated design of intake manifold, it will take you I think three and a half hour and total price will be around four hundred dollars again looks like it's more maintenance but maintenance is cheaper as a summary buy or not I would say if it's re if you really want to buy it yes buy because it's one of the most reliable car on the market with uh, one of the cheapest maintained cost compared to German car I would definitely buy this one it's drive the same good especially with uh, sports mode right now they put the three most uh, three settings on the sports mode uh, on the, your transmission and suspension mode and steering mode right now it really feels sporty but if you want to buy it or lease it I would say I'm not a Acura customer. For me, it's much more important specs and features. And for less money, I can get Dodge Durango with uh, more options or even some GM car. Uh, again, like for less money, I don't care what kind of emblem will be on my hood. I would prefer something bigger, more convenient, with more options and for less money. But compared to German's comparatives, I would choose this one. Again, Germans has eight cylinder engine or sporty model. In this case, yes, you don't have options. If you want something powerful, you're gonna buy like X5 M or some sports uh, a Porsche Cayenne. But for regular BMW X5 or Audi Q7, I would choose this one. Also guys, don't forget that Acura, one of the safest car on the market, maybe even safest. And also don't forget that this car has one of the most advanced all wheel drive system, which is like, I would say will beat most of the SUV on the market, especially if you put uh, winter tires during the winter time. Thank you for watching us, guys. We work hard for you. We freeze for you. And see you in our next review. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs>